Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here with Serpent X Tech and in this video I want to talk to you about solo mining and making sure that you're properly educated on it. It is a long-term play that could wind up yielding you decent rewards, but it is also a very risky situation that you may not wind up hitting any blocks that can cover your electricity costs, your internet costs, or your overhead. So I broke it down in, I broke it down. I broke it down into five different uh, categories. But there are other elements and variables that come into play. Feel free to share them down in the comments below. First one is understanding the risk. Second one is luck. Third one is network hash rate. Fourth is uh, comparing the profits between solo mining and pool mining. And the fifth one is just making sure that your entire setup, whether it's an ASIC, FPGA, or GPUs, is stable. If your system is instable or is constantly doing Windows updates or restarting because of a bad overclock, you're going to hurt your chances of actually hitting a block. Now, I have some of the advantages and disadvantages uh, linked down in the description from Blockchain Council. Um, but all of this stems from uh, a couple of videos uh, from Rabbit Mining. Rabbit Mining showed people how they can mine to their own KDX or Casper wallet uh, node as long as you have the bridge. But focusing on the advantages and disadvantages, in short, you could wind up solo mining a particular cryptocurrency for a long period of time but not even hit a block. Now with Caspa, for example, my rigs or my setups, I was able to hit three blocks in 48 hours, but with one FPGA, I was able to hit one block in under 12 hours. So in one day, I did get one block with my FPGA, but in three days with 18 giga hash and three rigs, I basically only got three. So there is some risk to it and you may never hit a block to help you cover your electric costs, your internet costs, your overhead costs. So it's a risk you got to be willing to take, okay? So you need to understand the overall risk. And it comes down to luck. It's like lottery, right? So again, you may never hit a block, but you could hit a block. And in the long term, solo mining would be more profitable than pool mining. It's theoretically, mathematically, and all that good stuff, solo mining would be more profitable long term than it would be to pool mining because you're paying the pool fees, you're paying fees on the miner, yada 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 that adds up but if you're solo mining to your own node you could save on those fees and reap all of the rewards however somebody could swoop in like they did for me uh where i was two percent off from winning a bitcoin block and get the whole entire reward and i get nothing so it kind of is a, a give and take situation and balancing act uh that you're gonna need to be aware of now you can go and check out the full list of advantages and disadvantages of both solo mining and pool mining link down below but i'm gonna continue moving on you can use miningpoolstats.stream to look at the various cryptocurrencies that are available to us with my three terahash node or or solo mining uh apollo bitcoin miner i may never hit a block i mean i two three terahash out of 324 exahash i it's very unlikely, but the chance is there, right? So I'm playing the lottery and I may never win in my lifetime, but if I did, it would bring substantial uh, assistance financially to my family. So you might wanna be looking more at some other coins that maybe doesn't have such a high net hash, but then you get into the speculative range. And the problem is, is those projects that you can smash a lot of solo blocks on may not be around long-term. And then you got a big bag of something you can't even sell. Caspa has climbed up in net hash recently with the renewed interest uh, since last year, as well as two miners adding support and a lot of content creators making videos about it. So obviously the net hash has increased. We're around 850 is what it says here on miningpoolstats.stream. But if we look at uh, miner stat, uh, we're around, yeah, 850 terahash is what it says. I think two miners says something different. Um, but in, in all, all in all, it's quite a significant amount of hash rate. You can see for most of the early part of 2023, we were around 350 to 400 terahash on the net hash. So smashing solo blocks during that time was actually pretty good. But as we continue to climb up and these new ASICs and FPGAs, the Osprey E300, the M2, start to come online or are already online, but just getting sold to different farms, we start to see the net hash just recently um, you know, we saw the net hash go from around 650 to 850. So 200 um, terahash. A lot of people uh, got onto two miners, but the net hash and interest in this project has grown quite a bit. 
and that's because of what the team has been doing. But that's going to take away from the chances of you smashing a solo block with a 2 giga hash card or a 4 giga hash card, whatever it might be. Uh, and we can use uh, 2 cryptocalc.com to calculate this information by entering our GPUs and all that stuff uh, or our hash rate. Scroll on down, you can see if we were to mine Caspa with our three rigs, we'll be making around, um, actually, let me refresh this real quick. I think around $11, yeah, $11.78 at 334 Caspa a day. If you actually click on that, it will take you to this page um, where it has your overall hash rate. You can enter that information manually and you want to know you can solo mine. Well, if, if you have this hash rate of 18 giga hash, Pool mining would net you about 460 cash per day or $16.24 in fiat minus the fees and all that stuff. But then solo mining, which you don't have to solo mine through two miners. You can solo mine through your own node because that will reduce the fees. Would get us two blocks or 492 cash per or $17.37. So long term, right, over 30 days, we're getting 56 blocks or 13,776 cash per. But pool mining is 13,799 cash per. So they're basically on par with another and if you're willing to risk it and possibly make more solo mining then you can go for it if you're not willing to risk it and you got bills to pay at the end of every month electricity internet rent whatever it might be lease then you need that that guarantee continuous income and so you got to weigh out the pros and cons so with my 18 giga hash system i only smashed three blocks in 48 hours recently with the uptick and the net hash however with my fpga only 4.2 giga hash i smashed one block in under 12 hours now i only got one block in a 24 hour time frame but still i hit that block fairly quickly and we saw rabbit mining in a recent video um actually the the caspa node setup video hit a block during their video creation fairly quickly so there is a chance yes you could hit a block but then you can sit there and you're sitting there watching your wallet consistently and you're never hitting a block. So check out the advantages and disadvantages of solo mining. But let's summarize here. So one, understanding the risk. Make sure you understand that and are willing to risk it for the biscuit. Okay. Two, it comes down to luck. It's a lottery. You can hit a block, make good rewards, or you cannot hit anything and still have to pay electricity, internet, and overhead. Three, network hash rate. If you don't have a lot of hash rate and you're about to get on a network that has a lot of hash rate, the chances of you hitting a solo block is very slim. The chances are still there. They're just very slim. So it's going to be, uh, uh, again, going back to one, a risk. Four, comparing the profits from pool mining to solo mining. Whatever, whatever currency you're looking at, just compare the two. Look at the math. Look at the numbers. See what you're interested in and what's best for you and your situation. Because everybody's situation is different. Somebody that's got solar mining or solar uh, solar setup and they're mining and it doesn't cost them any electricity, solar mining for them might be uh, fruitful. But solar mining for a big farm that might only get one or two blocks a month that won't cover their overhead or release or whatever might not be so fruitful. And then five, before you even start solar mining, make sure your rigs, your ASICs, your FPGAs, your GPUs are stable. Something that a system that continues to have to restart, so whether it's Windows updates or your overclock is too high or too low or not stable, and you're constantly restarting, you're going to hurt your chances of actually hitting a block. You want to make sure everything is stable first. So connect to a pool, make sure everything is stable and working. And then once everything's confirmed, switch over to solo mining, whether that's Caspa or whatever currency. It doesn't matter. Solo mining is the same. There's a number of inherent risk to it, there's going to be some luck to it calculating the net hash and the profitability um, and making sure your system is stable could help you maximize your profits when solo mining. However, there's probably going to be some other individuals that's going to leave some additional information in the comments. I appreciate you all so much, but that's going to do it for today's video. Do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date. So let's check out the additional links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And you just have yourself a wonderful, wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you in the next one. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you.